The sun's heat is beneath our feet. Scientists have figured out that Earth's core is actually as hot as the surface of the sun, around 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. One of the reasons it's so incredibly hot down there is because Earth is still shedding heat from when it was created billions of years ago. Also, when an object as big as Mars slammed into the young Earth, it not only created the moon, according to one theory, but melted the surface of the planet. A lot of that extra heat is probably still stored inside the core. But there's no need to worry. The planet's core is harder for us to access than it is to probe the surface of Pluto. In fact, chances are we may never develop technology that could physically reach the core. There's no air on the moon. But then, how can it be rusting? Scientists have discovered the presence of hermatite on the moon, and it's a kind of rust. A special NASA research instrument examined the light reflected off the moon's surface. It turned out that the composition of the satellite's poles was very different from the rest of it. The moon's surface is dotted with iron-rich rocks, but without oxygen and liquid water, rust can't appear. Solar winds add to the mystery. They bombard the moon with hydrogen, and hydrogen makes it much more difficult for hematite to form. Even though the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, it still has some trace amounts of oxygen. Its source is our planet's upper atmosphere. Earth also protects the moon from almost 100% of solar winds, although not all the time. And even though our natural satellite is bone dry, there might be water ice in the shadowed craters on its far side. A day on Uranus lasts 17 hours, 14 minutes, and 24 seconds. But get this, the planet has a tilt of around 98 degrees, and that makes a season on the gas giant last 21 Earth years. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, Mars's gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart, and it will likely result in the formation of a ring around the planet. The Earth is the densest in the solar system. At the Earth's center, there's a core that takes up 15% of the planet's volume. It consists of two parts, the outer and the inner core. The inner core is a solid ball made of iron and nickel. Its radius is 760 miles, which makes 20% of the entire Earth's radius and 80% of the Moon's radius. The 1,500-mile-thick outer core is liquid. It also consists of iron and nickel, but it's not under enough pressure to be solid. Mars houses the biggest volcano in the solar system. While everything seems to be calm on Mars nowadays, in the past, some sort of force caused enormous volcanoes to form and erupt. One of these volcanoes is Olympus Mons. It's 16 miles tall, which is the height of three Mount Everests and 374 miles across, making it about the size of Arizona. The volcano grew to such a gargantuan size because of the weak gravity on Mars and the lack of tectonic plate movement. Gravity is not the same everywhere. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and substances that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. You weigh 0.5% less standing at the equator than you do at the poles. In most cases, that's a difference of less than one pound. How high up you are also has an effect. So if you were at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Just don't look down. Earth's toughest living thing is so small, you can't see it. Water bears, also known as moss piglets, are cute little creatures with eight legs and squashed up heads that are less than a hundredth of an inch in length. Despite their microscopic stature, they can basically survive anywhere. They prefer bits of wet moss or the bottom of a lake, but they won't complain if you put them somewhere really uncomfortable. They can endure extreme cold and incredible heat, and survive both huge pressure and high radiation. Some of the little bears once even managed to survive unprotected in outer space for 10 days without a problem. Huh, that is tough. They handle all these things by rolling up into a ball and hibernating, which reduces their need for oxygen and food. The moon's gravity is about 17% of that on Earth, 
If you weighed 200 pounds on our home planet, on the moon, your weight would decrease to a mere 34 pounds. You would also be able to carry stuff six times heavier than what you can carry on Earth. It would also be easier to walk on the moon's surface, but it would be more dangerous too. Your feet, inside a heavy spacesuit, would sink into the lunar soil up to six inches deep. But let's imagine you decided to skip the tedious process of walking by leaping through the air. Then you'd likely lose control of your jumps in no time. Plus, the moon's surface is littered with deep craters. It would be a tough feat to avoid all of them. You can see solar eclipses because even though the moon is 400 times smaller than the sun, it's also 400 times closer to Earth. So it's perfectly capable of obscuring the star. But in 50 million years, I won't be around then. The moon won't be able to block the sun completely because of the satellite's changing orbit. A full NASA spacesuit costs an unbelievable $12 million. Yeah, I can believe that. 70% of this hefty sum is for the control module and backpack. At the very center of Uranus, there's a rocky core. Small, just half the Earth's mass. Compared to other planets, Uranus's core is rather cool, 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. An ice mantle surrounds the solid core, and that's the largest portion of the planet, about 80%. It's also not the ice you might be thinking about. It's a hot, dense fluid made up of water, ammonia, ice, and methane, sometimes referred to as a water-ammonia ocean. Uranus's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but it has its blue-green color because of methane gas that absorbs the red light. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system. But unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles. That's almost the same as the distance around Earth. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones, but none of them is known to erupt. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion times deeper than what we can hear. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discovered some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. There are planets that aren't bound to any star orbit and aimlessly wander through outer space. Among the most spectacular looking space objects are pulsars. Pulsars are a type of neutron star. They shoot out some of their material almost at the speed of light. Regular pulsars spin at a reasonable speed, between one-tenth to 60 times per second. But millisecond pulsars can spin at an impressive 700 times a second, which is way too fast for the human eye to even process. As they spin, they emit a beam of radiation from their axis that looks like the light from a lighthouse. Astronomers can notice pulsars when they face Earth, since it looks like a light being shined on our planet. When the light shines elsewhere, the pulsar can't be seen. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Saturn's rings are very thin compared to its size. If you had a scale model of the planet that was three feet wide, the rings would be 10,000 times thinner than a razor blade. Even though Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, it still has snow, but not what you'd expect. It snows metals and rains acid. Not a great vacation spot. Okay, picture this. In the not-too-distant future, you're heading out on a space vacation. 
and you need to decide which items are worth bringing along. But instead of checking the weather forecast, you open a gravity simulator. That's because you need to know how each object will behave on different planets. For instance, should you take this metal shovel with you or not? Well, according to your itinerary, it's going to be a long, long trip. You're planning to visit every planet in the solar system and even a few moons. But due to the difference in gravity on these space bodies, you're not sure how useful some of the objects you're going to bring along will be. Well, let's start with the basics. Tupperware. I don't know about other space travelers, but us Earthlings carry our Tupperware around everywhere we go. And still, if you were to transport it to, let's say, Mercury, it would most likely fly away into the atmosphere. These plastic containers you use to keep your food are too light. And since the gravity on Mercury is two and a half times weaker as gravity on Earth, well, maybe you'll have to fill your plastic containers up before taking them out of your spaceship to have a picnic. If a Tupperware container weighs about a half a pound on Earth, it'll weigh just a quarter of that on Mercury. Now, if we add some bananas, a handful of baby carrots, and two watermelons, then it'll be safe to carry it out of your space vehicle. You'll just have some difficulty making it all fit in in a standard-sized container. But wait! Before you do that, you should know that the atmospheric temperature on Mercury can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that any plastic container will instantly melt as soon as it gets in contact with the air. It'll burn up all the food, too. You can probably try taking a titanium container, that will work, or just stick to astronaut food. Now, shall we say Venus? Okay, Venus. If you were to take the same empty container to Venus, it would behave similarly to how it does on Earth. This is because Venus is also known as our planet's twin. These two have much in common. For example, almost the same size and mass. And when the topic is gravity, the formula goes like this. The bigger the mass and the greater the density, the stronger the gravity. Venus's gravity is approximately 10% weaker than Earth's. So, yes, you may leave your spaceship with your container, empty or full, and enjoy a beautiful and scenic lunch on the surface of Venus. Now, you'll have to figure out a way to eat without taking your spacesuit off, though. The atmosphere of Venus is filled with sulfuric acid, which can irritate your nose and throat and cause difficulties in breathing. Or worse, much worse. Now, you'll have to forget about taking anything too light outside on Phobos. A little hint for you, it's not a Greek island. Not even Greek yogurt, although it's a cool name. It's actually one of Mars's moons. Here, even your spacecraft would need a little extra help to keep close to the ground. If it weighed as much as a school bus, any regular-sized person could pick it up with just one hand. This is because on Phobos, the inhabitants of Earth barely feel the weight of gravity. And be very careful when jumping around, because one leap and you may fly straight into outer space. Uh, passengers on board the Voyager spaceship, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Well, you're approaching Jupiter, a gas giant. A never-ending storm is raging in its atmosphere. Plus, there's no solid surface there, which means no landing for you on this planet. If you look out the window, it might seem that you are moving through a giant cloud. But for the purpose of your experiment, it'll work just fine. Try throwing into the air that baseball you brought along in case you get bored of all the space travel. And measure the time it'll take the ball to hit the surface. If on Earth, the ball will fall at a speed of 32,174 feet per second. On Jupiter, the same ball will hit the ground at a speed 2.5 times greater than that. That's because Jupiter is more than 10 times as large as Earth, and around 300 times as heavy as our blue planet. Now, if you move your spaceship just a little bit to the side, to one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, the situation will be completely different. Throwing a baseball in the air on Europa will mean never seeing it again. Gravity there is almost non-existent, which means that not only a baseball, but even a grown-up person can fly away any second. Now, on the other hand, if you decided to venture out of the spacecraft to explore Europa's gravitational field, why not try to lift the space vehicle itself? On Europa, a regular Earthling can easily lift up to 1,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of a full-size male moose. <laughs> or you can lift a pyramid-like formation of nine regular people. Ah, the choice is yours. When approaching Saturn, be careful. 
While from afar, Saturn's rings look smooth and solid. From up close, you'll notice that they're made of chunks of ice and rocks floating in space. You won't want to have your spacecraft anywhere near those. There's also no solid surface on Saturn, which makes landing impossible. And the atmosphere is full of ammonia. Keep in mind that it's a pretty inhospitable environment for a human. Now inside the spaceship, you find a collection of sci-fi books, enough to fill an entire bookshelf. Altogether, they must weigh around 400 pounds. Yep, that many books. And like someone with a superpower, you try to lift over 200 pounds of weight at a time. But guess what? You fail! Because Saturn's gravity is too similar to that on Earth. Now in case you got confused with all this gravity talk, when we're measuring gravity, we're speaking about the power of the force by which a planet or other space body pulls objects toward its center. So if you need some help in organizing that sci-fi collection in alphabetical order, ask the crew to move the spaceship to a neighboring space body with a weaker gravitational pull. Like uh, Pluto. These days, it's not considered a planet anymore. Just a dwarf planet and one of the furthest from the sun's space bodies. You'll need an extra warm spacesuit to wear there. Pluto is freezing cold and has a tiny surface. It's smaller than Earth's moon. But it's a great place to test your strength. If on Earth it's kind of impossible for a regular person to lift an elephant, on Pluto, you'll be able to pick up a baby elephant weighing around 265 pounds. Or even a medium-sized elephant that can be as heavy as 2,000 pounds. On your way back to Earth, you make a pit stop on Uranus. The coldest planet in our solar system has an average temperature of around minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you attempt to get out of the spacecraft, you'll freeze mid-movement. Although gravity on Uranus is pretty similar to that on Earth, there's one thing that's very different – time. A two-week getaway on Earth turns into a three-year-long vacation on Uranus. Now, when you get sick of cold planets, you can travel back to warmer ones. <clears throat> Okay, now, Mars is definitely warmer than Uranus, but its average temperature is still about minus 81 degrees. On Earth, we only have such low temperatures at the South Pole during the winter. When you land on Mars, you'll start to feel light and strong at the same time. Mars's gravity is about 2.5 times weaker than that on Earth. So in other words, you'll probably manage to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. So, all those handstands you've been dreaming of doing, you've found a place to fulfill your dream. What would happen if our planet turned into two separate ones, one consisting entirely of land and the other one of water? Could we survive on any of them? And how? Well, you're lucky, because I'm going to answer this question right now. So, let's imagine that our Earth has turned into two separate planets sharing one orbit. Let's call these hypothetical planets rock and water. I know, I know, very original. Anyway, let's start with the rock because this one is much easier to imagine. All we should do is ask, what would happen if all the oceans on the Earth suddenly dried up? Now, we know that water is life. It covers 70% of the surface of our planet. There's so much water that even if all the oceans and seas disappeared, some of it would still be left in underground rivers, streams, and so on. But unfortunately, it would not be enough for us to survive. All sea creatures disappear. After some time, all other animals, plants, and of course, people share their fate. Completely dried forests burst into flames sooner or later and burn until there is nothing left but ashes. But hey, it's not that bad. Well, it is bad, but life can still exist in some form. There are some bacteria that make cockroaches jealous. They're able to survive absolutely any conditions. For example, extremophiles have already evolved to live without water. These little guys can survive in an incredibly hot or acidic environment without water or even sunlight. Without them, the rock becomes an empty, lifeless planet. Although, who knows? Maybe someday extremophiles will be able to evolve into some wildly cool forms that can survive literally anywhere. But for now, the rock is just a floating rock, basically. Oh wait, did you imagine a hot desert or some sort of red-hot steps? Surprise, surprise! This planet is actually extremely cold. You see, without water, there would be no atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of a concentration of various gases, including hydrogen and oxygen. Some H and O, you know where this is going, right? 
Yep, no water, no atmosphere. And since it is the atmosphere that accumulates all the heat we need, the planet would be very cold without it. The contrast between cold and less cold places also becomes very sharp. You see, water is basically a climate stabilizer. The oceans absorb almost all of the heat of our sun. They distribute it evenly over the Earth to make sure it doesn't get too cold or too hot. So without it, the rock gradually turns into a cold desert. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. At both poles, the temperature is extremely low, about minus 300 degrees. And even in the warmest places, it doesn't exceed 20 degrees. These warm places are now the former oceans because their dried up depths are located much closer to the hot core of the planet. Wait, I hope you don't imagine this planet as covered in snow either. We don't have any water at all, remember? It's just a very cold rock. At this point, we're just a bigger and browner version of the moon. The moon is basically a waterless piece of Earth after all. But hey, what happens to volcanoes? They're basically our last hope to stay warm, aren't they? Unfortunately, volcanic activity is decreasing due to a lack of water. You see, volcanoes and their eruptions happen because of the collisions of two tectonic plates, the oceanic and continental ones. The weight of the water presses on the oceanic plates. They go under the continental plates and form volcanoes. So if there's no water weight, then there's no volcanoes and volcanic activity drops significantly. The rock now is just a planet full of many incredible high mountains. And every time the tectonic plates collide, they form more and more of these mountains and trenches, including some very big ones, like the famous Mariana Trench. I would say, be careful not to fall, but hey, there's no one to fall there. So, Also, there's no weather anymore. No water means no more snow, ice, or rain, or even clouds. The wind would probably be quite strong, though. Well, that's the fate of the planet rock. Not very bright, so let's just go see how the water planet is doing. Many, many billions of years ago, I wasn't around then, our Earth actually was a planet entirely covered with water. Then, about a billion years ago, the sea level dropped. The land appeared. This has changed the atmosphere of our planet forever, and that's how life was born here. But what happens if it returns to its original state? Well... To answer that question, we should first learn more about the ocean planets. So what does one of these look like? Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. We have no idea. We haven't found any planets of this type because they're incredibly rare. I mean, there is one planet that is low-key and could be called an ocean planet. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Still, even this one doesn't look the way you probably imagine. The water on it is in a very weird, unique state. Scientists have called this hot ice or super liquid water, and we've never seen anything like this before. In general, though, the actual ocean planets are very hard to find due to many physical reasons. These planets require very specific temperatures, pressures, and so on. But all right, just hypothetically, what would such a planet look like? Well, first of all, of course, it cannot be made entirely of water. I hope you didn't actually think that there could be just some gigantic water blob spinning around a star. It should still be a planet with a core and some kind of foundation. So let's just imagine that all the water on the former Earth has mixed into one giant salty ocean. Wow, that would be a dream come true for the sea creatures, but not for the rest of us. The only animals that could survive in this situation, except fish, are probably the birds that can swim and feed on fish. Now, I think even if the sea level rose significantly, at least a couple of islets could still stay above the water. Such islands would be the former peaks of huge mountains like Mount Everest. So if these birds build their nests there, they can even survive for some time. But what about you and me? Well, we still have a chance. If we had enough time to prepare for the huge flood, we could stay safe either in giant submarines or on giant ships. We can grow food on board and fish from the ocean. But without the Everest Islands, we are unlikely to last long. If something breaks and we have nowhere to dock, we won't be able to fix it. Unfortunately, we no longer have drinking water. Now we can get it only from rain or by filtering seawater. But we have to store it someplace, right? And all these water containers would take up a lot of space and be very heavy. But in general, planet water is not as bad as it might seem. It's quite warm. The average temperature here is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and the gap between the lowest and highest temperatures is minimal, from minus 20 degrees at the poles to 70 degrees at the equator. Compared to planet rock, this ain't bad at all. Planet water would also be slightly larger than the Earth in radius due to the volume of, yes, water. The density of this planet would be, on the contrary, quite low. The gravity could become a bit weaker, too. Now, as for both planets, if we place them in the Earth's orbit, after some time, they would still move away from each other and follow different trajectories. They would have aligned themselves not to collide with each other. On one of them, the year would last 12 months, and on the other one, 10 or 11. And that's about it. A fun fact. All of this can actually happen in the future. First of all, the Earth's crust is gradually becoming thinner. Hey, I like thin crust. On my pizza. On my planet, mm, not so much. So, one day, water can really flood our entire land. On the other hand, in a couple of billion years, when our sun begins to expand and turn into a red giant, all the oceans on our planet will really dry up. Alright, take a deep breath and shake it out. That's enough of this grim fairy tale. It's a waste of time to worry about such things so far off when, today, I can't find my wallet anywhere. I thought I put it over here. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.